up for today, our word up for today is Jesus forgives and restores. Jesus forgives and restores. So let's go ahead. Our memory verse comes from the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. I'm going to read it out loud, and we're going to go and say it all together. So this is what 1 John 1, 9 says. It says, But God is faithful and fair. If we admit that we have sinned, he will forgive us our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing that we have done. He will make us pure. 1 John 1, 9. So let's go ahead and read it all together. Ready? I know it's a little bit long today, but... It's individual sentences, so it should be not that bad to do. Uh, let's try our best. Ready? One, two, three. But God is faithful and fair. If we admit that we have sinned, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. First John 1 John 1.9. All right. Let me cover up a couple of the words. You want to try it again? is faithful and fair. If we admit that we have sinned, he will forgive us our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. 1 John 1, 9. All right. Let's try it again. Ready? But God is faithful and fair. If we admit that we have sinned, he will forgive us our sins. He will forgive everything that we have done. He will make us pure. First John 1 John 1.9. Okay. That was awful. We were all in a giant blob and it sounded all together. So let's do it all on the count of three and say it correctly all together. Ready? Sam, do it properly, please. Ready? One, two, three. But God is faithful and fair. If we admit that we have sinned, he will forgive us our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. 1 John 1, 9. All right, what is our word up for today? On the count of three, one. On the count of three, one, two, three. Jesus forgives and restores. Good job. No. Switch on. All right. We've been going over our big picture question for a couple of weeks now. And our big picture question is, how do we know that God wants us to know him? If you know the answer, Noah, come here. Sit right up here in the front. All right. So how do we know that God wants us to know him? How, does, how do we know? Yeah. We know, Colin, Samuel, we know that God wants us to know him because he reveals himself, he tells us about himself through his word. All right. One more time, our word up on the count of three. One, two. All the boys forgot how to count to three. It's so sad. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> Jesus forgives and restores. All right. <laughs> All right, it is time for our Bible story video. Let me move this one so you guys can see a little bit better. Or all this month, sorry. We've been looking at the eyewitness accounts of people who saw Jesus after his resurrection. Now, last week, does anybody remember? Who did we learn about last week? We studied the book of John, but what disciple did we learn about last week who appeared to Jesus? Sorry, what was that, Samuel? Tom? Do you remember his full name? Thomas. There we go, Thomas. Now, we learned last week that Thomas had doubts about Jesus' resurrection when he first heard the news from the other disciples. Jesus allowed Thomas to to investigate by offering him absolute proof of his resurrection. Remember, he said, look at my hands, put your hand, your fingers where the nails were, right? Put your hand on my side where I was poked with the spear. And then Jesus invited Thomas to make a decision. He said, stop doubting and believe. 
And we learned last week that Thomas responded by declaring that Jesus was both Lord and God. Now, Nora, not the train. Now, quiet, please. Now, if we go back a little bit before Jesus' arrest, what happened was, if you remember, Peter promised that he would never abandon Jesus. Now, before his arrest, Jesus warned the disciples and warned Peter and said, told them that they should pray to God before when they went in the Garden of Gethsemane so that they wouldn't fall into sin. Instead, hold on to your question. Okay. Instead, Peter bragged about how he was more loyal to Jesus than any of the other disciples. If any of them left Jesus, Peter said, I will never leave you. When Jesus was arrested, Peter and the rest of the disciples abandoned Jesus. They ran away because they were afraid that they were going to get arrested too. To make matters worse, Peter even denied knowing Jesus three times the night of Jesus' arrest. Now afterwards, afterwards, Peter was so overcome with guilt that he broke down and he cried. And he was so heartbroken over the fact that he had abandoned Jesus and betrayed him and denied even knowing him three times. Now, Philip, switch on, put your, put your snack away. Thank you. Now, the disciples handled Jesus' arrest and his crucifixion. Each of them handled it differently. Each of them abandoned Jesus. Each of them betrayed Jesus in their own way. They s- promised that they would be with him, and they ran away. And they handled the results of that betrayal very differently. Judas, who betrayed Jesus for money, was so overcome with guilt, and he felt that Jesus would never be able to forgive him, that he took his own life and he killed himself. He probably thought that Jesus could never forgive him for what he had done. Thomas, hold on to your question, Daniel, okay? Uh, Is it a comment? Okay, hold on to your comment, okay? Thomas responded by doubting Jesus' resurrection and needed reassurance to know that Jesus was really alive again. Peter was probably unsure that Jesus would even want him to be a disciple after he denied knowing him. Before Jesus' arrest, Peter was kind of the unofficial leader of the disciples. Whenever they had a question, the disciples had a question for Jesus, they would tell Peter, go ask the question, right? And he would kind of be the leader of the disciples. But now, I'm sure Peter thought, you know what? Since I denied knowing Jesus not once, not twice, three times, Jesus probably doesn't want me to serve him and to help him. Now, this awkwardness, right, between Peter and Jesus still existed even after Jesus' resurrection. Jesus appeared to the disciples two times already, right? But still, Peter was probably unsure where his place was among the disciples. Was he still allowed to be a follower of Jesus? Welcome. You want to come on in? This is second service here, a little bit early though. Okay, you're gonna wait for third service? Okay. Now, later, after Jesus' resurrection, Simon Peter and a few of the other disciples were hanging out together near the Sea of Galilee, and they decided to go fishing. They went out on a boat to fish all night long. However, They had not caught anything after a full night of fishing. Early in the morning, Jesus appeared on the shore of the sea. The disciples didn't realize that it was Jesus, probably because he was so far away. Boys, listen, please. Jesus called out to them and asked, Friends, do you have any fish? No, they replied, because they couldn't catch anything all night. So Jesus told them to throw their nets on the right side of the boat. Then they wouldn't have been listening and they would have missed out on this miracle that Jesus did. When they did so, when they listened and threw their nets down and listened to Jesus, they caught so many fish that they couldn't pull the nets up into the boat because it was so heavy. John. Quiet down, please. John, who was one of the disciples, who was one of the first disciples who had been called to be a follower of Jesus, realized that the man on the shore was Jesus. 
John remembered, John, John remembered that Jesus had performed a similar miracle when he and Peter were first called to be disciples a long time ago. And so John said, it is the Lord. As soon as Peter heard this, he put on his coat to show respect for Jesus, and then he couldn't wait to get to shore, so he jumped in the water and swam to shore. The other disciples followed, towing the net of fish behind them. When they reached the shore, they saw a fire with fish and bread cooking. Jesus invited them to bring some of the fish they had caught, and then Jesus told them to sit down and to eat breakfast with them. Yeah. All of the disciples knew that it was really Jesus that was with them. They didn't have to ask Jesus, who are you? Because they knew that Jesus was alive. And this was the third time, the third time that Jesus had appeared to his disciples after his resurrection. You'll see that there's a lot of threes in our Bible story today, actually. Right? Yes. Uh, we'll talk about that. Shh. Boys, quiet down. We can talk about that later during break time. <laughs> All right. So after Jesus and disciples had finished eating, Jesus spoke to Peter. So Daniel just m- mentioned threes, right? There's a lot of threes. Here's some more threes, right? So Jesus spoke to Simon Peter and said, Simon, son of John, do you really love me more than these others do? Yes, Lord, Peter answered. And then Jesus told Peter to feed his lambs. Now, he wasn't talking about animals like Jesus didn't have a bunch of pets at his house somewhere that he told Peter to take care of what he was talking about is that he wanted Peter to take care of other Christians that would put their trust in Jesus after right yeah because Jesus is the shepherd right it's a symbol once again Jesus asked Peter Simon son of John do you really love me and again Peter answered yes Lord you know that I love you And once again, Jesus told Peter to take care of his sheep. And then for a third time, Jesus asked Peter, Simon, son of John, do you really love me? Now, Peter began to feel bad because Jesus had asked him three different times, right? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And so Jesus told Peter, yeah, because maybe Peter thought that Jesus didn't really believe him, right? Because Jesus knows everything. And so Peter told Jesus, feed my sheep. After Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, Jesus gave Peter three chances to express his commitment and love as a follower of Jesus. Jesus forgave Peter and then reminded him of God's plan for his life. Instead of catching fish, Jesus wanted Peter and the rest of the disciples to catch people for God's kingdom by telling them, about Jesus and the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. Peter would live and die to give glory to God. And then Jesus invited Peter to follow him again. That brings us to our Christ connection for today. Boys, quiet down. The disciples had turned away from Jesus when he was arrested. But Jesus still wanted to use them as part of God's plan, as fishers of men who would tell people the good news about Jesus and invite them to follow Jesus and be part of God's kingdom. Jesus is the Lord who forgives us and makes things right with God again. Let's go ahead and pray together. Put your hands together. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. And let's pray. God, in today's Bible story, we saw that, uh, that Jesus, that you forgave Peter after he denied knowing you three times, after he probably felt that he was unworthy of being a disciple or being your follower again. But you restored him. You invited him again to follow you. We pray, Jesus, that when we sin against you, that when we mess up, instead of running away or giving up, that we would come to you, that we would ask you for forgiveness, and that we would be restored for you so that we can continue to serve you. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.